important music that that lasts, that lingers, that sells those 10 million copies of albums is not formula music. It's crazy music. It's the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon. It's the Beatles. It's Led Zeppelin. It's stuff that was out there. If you had asked people to listen to 30 Seconds of Dave Matthews, they probably would have said, oh, this is lame. There's a violin in the band. Oh, what the hell is this? Good music is timeless. Great music and great lyrics blow people's minds. I said, watch will you stream, my friend. Good afternoon, music listeners. Do you want to find some new music to listen to? Tired of hearing the same sh over and over again? Well, that's too bad, because that's what sells. And if you keep listening to music that sells, you're gonna end up listening to the same Dwang over and over again. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you have to hate the Dwang. If Nicki Minaj is your jam, then by all means, keep on listening. But consider what you've been given to choose from. Now let's rewind the clocks to 1996. A long time ago, I know. 1996 was the year that the Telecommunications Act changed the number of radio stations that one company could own. A decent sized car dealership had just loaned money to a guy who wanted to buy a radio station. Things didn't work out for him and he defaulted. So now this car company owned a radio station. As a business, their obvious goal was to make money and economically, the best way to do that is to get more people to listen to your radio station. Unfortunately, the music that got played didn't have to be phenomenally good, it just had to be good enough to keep people from changing the station. Now they're known as Clear Channel, and they're the biggest radio company in the United States with over a thousand stations. They're also the owners of iHeartRadio, which you've probably heard of if you listen to radio. The unfortunate fact now is that radio is only going to play the hits because that's what people want to listen to. And the problem with that is that what makes a hit now is not what used to make a hit. Let's look at an artist like John Coltrane. Considered to be one of the best saxophone players of all time. When his music first came out, people hated it. Or maybe they didn't hate it, but they didn't love it. Years go by and people end up loving this music. Why? Because at the time it came out, they didn't hate it because it was bad. They hated it because it was different. The hits of today are instant hits. The people need to love it and the people need to love it right now. But radio is not the only culprit. Big name record companies might be more to blame. 30 years ago, there were probably a hundred record companies, big name labels. Now there's like four. And these huge dominating businesses aren't run by people who care about music, they're run by people that care about money. So think about what that does to the artist. It's not about the music anymore, they're expected to stick to whatever formula creates that instant hit. And they have to do that unless they want to produce their music on their own or just not have anybody produce their music. In this day and age, how an artist is presented determines how popular they are. If you're not pretty or handsome or have an ass the size of a small moon, you're not gonna make it in popular music today. Artists like Willie Nelson or Stevie Wonder would not be a part of mainstream music now like they were in their day. Willie's not that handsome. Sorry, Willie. And Stevie Wonder's blind. So think of all the great music that we might be missing out on just because of the culture that we live in. For an example, let's listen to a country song from the early 90s, more specifically 1991. Don't rock the jukebox I wanna hear some John Cause my heart ain't ready For the Rolling Stone Now let's listen to a popular chart from 1991 <laughs> Fast forward the clocks to today. Let's listen to a country hit within the last two years. Uh, uh. I got that real good, feel good stuff Up under the seat of my big black jacked up truck Rolling on 35s Pretty girl by Now let's listen to a pop hit from the last two years. Twenty 
20 years ago, you could tell a distinct difference between two different genres, and now the lines are starting to get blurred together. That's that instant hit formula. It's what the masses want to listen to right now, so that's where all the genres end up going. And even with the radio and the record companies doing what I consider to be awful things, they're not even the ones most to blame. We are. There's a reason commodified things sell. Because we buy them. We live in a culture today that has to have everything right now. We expect things to be provided for us out of convenience, and as a result, we're selling ourselves short. I, for one, am very guilty of this. When I do turn on the radio or listen to a new song, I'll give it about five seconds before I switch to something else. I used to hate Green Day, a band that I now love, because I never gave myself a chance to become familiar with their music. I only ever started to enjoy it when somebody forced me to listen to it. So with that, I have a challenge to everyone who's watching this video. I challenge you to take five to ten minutes a day and just listen to music you would never in a million years listen to. If you want suggestions on a certain song in a particular genre, just put it in the comments. And I'll do my best to research and steer you in a helpful direction. So if you, like me, want to get music back to being about the music and not about the money, then we have to break free of how we've been conditioned to listen to it. Guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of this video. As always, I look forward to reading your comments, and I encourage you to always keep your ears open. Thanks, guys.